Have you ever heard about him? Of course, when I get through, he's not just scared to death. He's never seen him prayer, so. Uh, but we're real happy, and let's remember her in prayer. She's going to have a little one. It was a safe journey in all. And she can bring it out to the house. Spoil it rotten, and then I'll send it home. Amen. Amen. I like doing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There used to be a, a lady come to church in, uh, uh, well, here in Walmart, it's actually up on Hill Street. And she used to have a little boy. I mean, the beautiful outfit. And I'd bring a chocolate candy to eat. I didn't have to wash his clothes, she did. <laughs> Okay, today we're going to start a little bit with the Lord's Prayer. Amen. Simply because I wanted to get this out to people because it talks about forgiveness. Yeah. And the Bible also says if you don't forgive, He won't forgive you. See, forgiveness is not hurting nobody but you. As I said before, if you don't forgive and you keep it inside after a while, it makes you a grouchy old person. And believe it or not, you'll get older a lot faster that way than you will by age. Because it'll make you that way. Uh, let me get the glasses back on. Well, I'm going to read this in uh, Matthew 6. Start about the ninth verse. And this is when he is telling his disciples, uh, I'll pray there's different versions of it in there. It all says the same, though. It says, After this manner, therefore, pray, Her Father, which are in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day her daily bread, and forgive her debtors as we forgive their gifts. but deliver us from evil. There is the power and the kingdom forever. But it does say forgive and you will be forgiven. If you don't forgive, you won't be forgiven. He said if you forgive, your heavenly Father will forgive you and if you don't forgive, your heavenly Father won't forgive you. Pray about the matter before we get into it. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you. And everyone that's here, grant each and every prayer. To give our granddaughter a safe journey home as she returns back. We ask you, Lord, to watch over them and keep them, Lord, and give them a healthy child, Father. It doesn't yeah. matter, boy or girl, we'll lie, we'll love it just the same. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Mm -hmm. He said in this here, he wanted us to forgive. Now, he was telling his disciples how to pray and teaching them what to pray. And he was teaching them what to do and how to do it. See, Jesus came to set an example for us. He lived his life as an example to the people upon this earth to lead us to heaven. See, when he was, when them people went down into Egypt and they lived down there, 430 years, the first 30 years, you don't hear too much about it because they lived and had it made. They didn't worry about a thing because they were living in a land called Goshen that the king had gave them, and they were doing fine. But after the king died and Joseph died, they came up to another king, and he said, they're getting too many of them, and they got to pray, and they put them under bondage, and they said, they began to pray then. Because when they got in trouble, most people don't know who God is, they get in trouble, then they know God. Uh -huh. But as quick as they get out of trouble, a lot of times they forget Him again. Yeah. But let me tell you, God is an ongoing thing. You can't just forget it when you're healthy and wise and doing everything else, but you can serve Him always because forgetting Him just because you had trouble and He got you out of it and then you forget Him don't mean you're a Christian. That's true. All that means is you got over it, and then you forgot the one that got you over it. God said, Gary, he said down there in Egypt, they began to pray, Lord, deliver us. 
They wanted to deliver, but yet uh, they were serving other gods while they were down there. Because when they got in the wilderness, they built a golden calf that the Egyptians served and said, let this be your God. Yeah. Just, there's only one cross that you and I could be saved and we could go to heaven and we could be in heaven with him. He said, I'll be with you. I'll be your God. You'll be my children and I'll live with you and you can live with me. Yeah. No more of this down here that we're living apart. God. Yeah. That's what the Bible said. Yeah. The Bible says that we can live with him. We can go in and out. We don't need the sun. We don't need the moon because God will be the light of that town of the kingdom. God will be the light. Right. We can look into the heavens. We can look into the heavens. Can't see much from here. Forgiveness is a part, is a big part of your Listen, if you can't forgive somebody for hurting your feelings, there's something wrong. If you can't forgive somebody for saying something, because listen, when they beat Christ with that wheel, they led him and made him carry his own cross, and they hung him on it, nailed him with the nail, and put the crown of thorns on his head, pierced his side, made fun of him, and said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Honey, that's the problem. Yeah. We still don't know what we're doing. That's true. Yeah. If we didn't have Jesus leading us, it's hard to tell where we'd be today. Yes. A lot of people say, I believe. The Bible says the devil believes in fear and tremble. Mm -hmm. But he ain't saying it, did he? Mm -hmm. Where are you going to go today and what are you going to be? Well, I hope I go to heaven and I hope I'm a Christian man. I believe I am. But see, it don't matter what people says about us. Honey, listen, if you take the, the bad stuff that people say about us, and we apply it to our life, and we start living that way, and we start drinking that in, honey, that's just like anything else. It'll kill us after a while. We'll forget about God, and all we'll do is have rid You know, the Bible said, the, God said, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I don't have to get back at somebody that does something to me. You don't have to get back at somebody. All you've got to do, I'll often forgive them right. and see what happens. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You want to see a fellow's eyes bug out of his head? <laughs> forgive him when he does something to you and say, you know something? I'm just going to forgive you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to see something happen in your life? Forgive that. Because believe it or not, the Bible says that they're going to persecute you. They're going to try you. They're going to make fun of you. They're going to do all these things. They did them to our Savior. What makes you think you're any better than he is? Yeah. If he don't, if he, they done it to him, he said they'll do it to you. Because we're not living the same way everybody else is. Yeah. We're living a different life, but they don't understand it. Yeah. So we ought to be like Christ. I believe it was Stephen said, Lord, when they were stoning him, and that was a bad way to die, to stand there and let people throw stones at you till you die. He saw, he said, Lord, lay this sin not to their charge. How in the world can we get through to heaven if we will let a little thing like somebody saying something about us bother us that much? Mm -hmm. Honey, they can say what they want to. But that don't mean anything. It ain't what they say about you, but it's what you do about what they say that counts. It's what you say, it's what you do about what they say about you and do to you. If you can't forgive them, the Bible says, and I got this on great authority, it says it right here. Right here. <laughs> that he won't forgive you. Amen. Not he might not, or not he. Well, maybe on later on. Honey, listen, let me tell you something. 
When God forgives you, you forgive. Those the people say, oh, I forgive them, but I just can't forget about it. I can't do it. You know, God forgave us and he said he cast our sin as far as the east is from the west to remember them no more. And he set an example for us. And we're supposed to follow that example. Amen. And if we don't follow that example, what, what are we doing? There's an example that we're supposed to follow as Christians. Forgiveness is one of them. Amen. Loving one another. <laughs> Boy, I tell you what, when, when it talks about loving one another as yourself, that's a big love there. Jesus loved us enough to die for us. And he said, no greater love than any man than lay down his life for a friend. Would you lay down your life for your friend? Would you count it? If that friend, if you had a choice between, a, uh, you had a friend that was a sinner, and God said, one of you has to go, you or him, would you take his place? Because he's not saved, and you are. Would you take his place? Well, I hope. I'm not going to say I would, because you never know that that time yeah. comes. But I hope I would. I, I hope I would. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure that I would. Because I ain't walked in them shoes yet, but I hope I would. Because, listen, they can't take your life if you're a Christian. They can take this body, but they can't do nothing else. That's right. And listen, if they take this body today, I'll just beat you to heaven. That's all. Amen. Amen. <laughs> you know, this body don't matter much. It, it was made to be used up and done away with. Because dust you are and dust you will return. Uh -huh. This body was never made for eternity. But it was made to get ready for eternity. Uh -huh. The spiritual body, it was made for him to get ready to go to heaven. But that spiritual body can't be a spiritual body to go to heaven unless you forgive. Amen. Amen. Forgiveness is a great part of the love of Jesus Christ. Remember, God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Now He knew He was going to die, but He came anyway. He knew what He had to do when He came. But He gave His life and forgave us of our sin that we might have eternal life. And we still wonder about what in the world we're we going to do about somebody. Have you ever had a neighbor you just absolutely couldn't stand? <laughs> well, yeah. I've had, I've had, I've had <laughs> two. <laughs> you know, my mom used to have a, a thing she used to tell us kids when we got on our nerves, she'd say, you're trying my patience. Trying my patience. Yeah. <laughs> I've had neighbors that I would just soon prefer to be in another county. That's right. But the problem is, God says forgive them. Love them. Love them. And love them as you would yourself. Uh -huh. And you know something? I'm going to tell this on a brother who comes and visits us every once in a while and talks to us. And it's a good story, so I'm going to just uh, tell it. And his wife sometimes listens to me so she'll know what I'm talking about. He went to work. But he, uh, he was a Christian, and this man walks up to him and gets mad at him and slaps him in the face. And because he was a Christian, he didn't do anything. Now, normally, back in his days before he got saved, he would afford the guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because he was that kind of type of fellow. But he didn't do anything. They asked him, said, you want to get this guy far? You can get him far. He said, no, I don't want to get him far. That guy bothered him for a long time at work. But he met him one day after, I think they both retired, I'm not sure, but I think they both was retired. And the man woke up to him and apologized to him for what he had done to him and asked him, said, would you go to church with me? <laughs> Listen to what he said, he slapped him. He didn't do anything to him. He didn't get him pardoned. That is forgiving a person. That's saying, no, I don't want him pardoned. Because he didn't, he don't know what he's doing. That's right. He slapped him, and later on, the same guy that slapped him said, 
would you go to church with me? And the man, he said, as quick as I go home and get my clothes changed, I'll be right back. The man was saved. What happened? The man saw the forgiveness that he had in his life. Uh -huh. And he thought about it, no doubt. And he remembered it through his life. And he wanted the same thing. Yeah. And later in life. And I think if we live that way and show that kind of forgiveness and show that kind of love, there's people out there that might not be saved as long as we're alive, but might think about it later on in life and say, I want that kind of life too. Mm -hmm. Not the kind of life that this natural body would live. Not this life that this natural body that has when Jesus had to die for us. But the one that Jesus gives us through Him, through the Spirit, because now we live a spiritual life. We live, we live a life of peace. And we're not going to go back to the other one. Anyway, I hope you don't. We have a time. And we, you know, we talk about that, that, that guy, I don't know where they'll listen to him or not look how he's dressed. He's not dressed good. He's preaching love and forgiveness and stuff. <laughs> Can you imagine what they thought about John the Baptist when he came out of the wilderness in, in the clothed and skin and, and had her long hair, no doubt, and a long beard, and he ate locusts and wild honey, and that's all he did, and he was preaching. I know a man called Jesus is coming. He wasn't dressed too good, but he knew the man called Jesus. That's right. Honey, you don't have to be dressed good to know a man called Jesus. It don't matter what you've got on. Yeah. What matters is how you live it. Amen. Yeah. Amen. We think because we put on a suit, and I don't like them. <laughs> but in my younger days, I used to wear them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They think because we got on a three-piece suit and a big old tie, and her hair is in place. And did you notice I ain't got much? But they think because we're that way that we're the preachers. And they, they won't tell nothing but the truth. But honey, let me tell you something. You can take and make a brick outhouse. The side of a wooden outhouse. And that brick outhouse will look beautiful. But it holds the same thing. <laughs> Amen, brother. <laughs> True you can dress as good as you want to, but if you don't have Jesus in your life, you've got the same thing as the one that dresses bad has. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Honey, it takes Jesus in your life to make you a Christian. Yeah. It takes forgiveness for you to be a Christian. Yeah. It takes yeah. love for you to go to heaven. Lord. You know, I never did thought I'd use the outhouse part very good. <laughs> <laughs> came, came, came pretty good, didn't it? <laughs> Most of us know what it is. Yes! Yeah. <laughs> I've lived there. <laughs> done that. Me too. Yeah, yeah. But it doesn't matter whether they're dressed up or they're not. If they're not a Christian, they hold the same thing. Yeah. Satan. Yeah. See, God cleans us up on the inside. Thank you, Lord. We're no longer an outhouse. Yes. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Jesus. We become a cleaned up, yeah. purified, purified body yeah, yeah, of truth. Yeah. And we better tell the truth. That's why I get in trouble a lot of times. I tell it. People don't want to hear it. Yeah. But you see, the difference is me telling the truth and nobody wanting to hear it, I'm still doing what, what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm still going to heaven. Them that don't want to hear it ain't making it. Amen. Unless they begin to hear it and begin to listen and begin to walk uh, until Jesus Christ comes. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a halfway thing. It's not starting and quit. That's right. It's all in or none. Amen. 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 I know. Because I've been there. I've had good neighbors and I've had bad ones. 
but it doesn't matter. You got to treat them all the same. Yeah. Because in doing so, you know, the Bible talks about in doing so, doing praying for them that fight for you too and abuse you and persecute you and doing all this. And you find in the Bible it says you'll heap coals of fire upon their head. Why are you heaping coals of fire upon their head? Honey, let me tell you something. When God gets started with the person, they'll either say yes to Him or they'll fail. See, God only knows, only has one way. That's the narrow road and the straight gate. And if you ain't on that, you're on the wrong one. And you're going the wrong way. There's no detours going to heaven. It's straight. It's not, it's not veering one way or the other. You remember a lot of times the Bible said, don't veer left or don't veer to the right. Go straight. And that's what the Bible is. It tells you a straight course to go. And one of those courses is forgiveness and love. It also says don't judge, don't condemn. Because you see all this stuff, if you condemn, you will be too. If you judge, you will be too. If you don't forgive, you won't be either. Amazing man, how that works out. You know why that is? Because we're supposed to be God-like. We're supposed to be Christ-like. We're supposed to follow Him. He don't follow us, we follow Him. That's why when you come into this church house, you know Jesus is here because there's so many here. Amen. And each one of us has Him living inside of us if you're a Christian, so He came when we did. And I want you to know something else. When we leave, he don't stay here either. He goes with us. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Some people think that the building is what it is, but when we leave, the building's a building. Yes, it's, a building. it's only a church when Jesus is here. Amen. Uh -huh. Amen. That's right. Forgiveness is a great, powerful tool. Like I said, you want to see somebody's eyes butt down their head when they do something wrong or threaten you or something, just look at it and say, well, I'll forgive you. Matter of fact, they won't know what to do. Because they figure you're going to do something to them to get back at them. But if you do that, then you're just doing exactly what the devil wants you to do. God wants us to be Christians and a light in the world. Matter of fact, the scripture says you are the light of the world. Why? Because Jesus, when he died, he was the light of the world. He went back to God. And now, he says, inside of us, we become the light of the world because he shines through us. If he shines through us, then we ought to have the forgiveness that he has. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying you don't get angry and mad now. That'd be a little bit too much, wouldn't it? There's sometimes you get mad, but after you think about it, you think, well, you know, it's not worth it. I want to mention something that talks about, you remember when it talks about the deadly poison and the, and the, and the snakes and the, the serpent and all that in the Bible? Well, honey, do you know you can take and you can listen and you can hear anything you want to that's bad, that's evil, but as long as you don't apply it to your life, it's not going to kill you. It's not going to harm you. Do you know when it talks about serpents, you pick up, sir, I know there's a lot of people in those churches that get rattlesnakes and stuff and put them in boxes so they can pick them up. Yeah. But what does the Bible call the serpent? The devil. Yeah. In the Garden of Eden, he called it a serpent. All through the Bible, he calls it a serpent. Yeah. You can handle Satan yeah. as long as you got the antidote, which is Christ. Christ. Mm -hmm. right. See, that's the problem. We some people don't have the antidote; they don't have Christ. Yeah, that's right. Now, I'm not going to pick up a snake and see if, see if I got enough faith not to bite me, because that snake might not know I got faith. Yeah. Yeah. But I'll tell you this. I believe if one bought me and God does, and it's not my time to go, I ain't going nowhere. You're not going nowhere. Right, right. 
They were eating. <laughs> Some people that handle those snakes forget to and said, don't tempt God. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's another thing that you don't want to do. Mm -hmm. But forgiveness is a great powerful tool that we have. And I'm, I'm sure Satan would be right beside him and saying, you are that guy saying He called you a bad word. Do you know that? And then he's agony on them, just like people do at work and stuff. Uh -huh. Well, you ought to do this. Then. You ought to go over and just knock your block off. Yep. No, I'll just say, I forgive you. Yep. That's all I got to do. Yep. And believe, it, believe it or not, when I was a kid, I used to get in fights. And the only thing that lost in the fight was my clothes. We both looked like we'd been through a war, but our clothes looked worse. They were torn and everything else had thrown away. The only thing that loses in the body is your clothes. Because you can get healed up from a black eye or something, but your clothes can't. You have to throw them away. Forgiveness is much easier. Saying forgiveness to a guy is a whole lot easier than going to war with him. Now, we go to war sometimes with Christ. And don't get me wrong, when it says judge not, condemn not, and all this, the Bible says that. And we know that it says that. But you've got to put your foot down when somebody's dead wrong, and you know it, and they're trying to say they're Christian, and trying to say this is right, and that's wrong, this. When they get out of the Bible, yeah. you have a right to look at the fruit. And if their fruit is not good, then they're not either. Yeah. You ever eat a crab apple? You ever taste one? I have. Yeah. They'll put your face in so many different uh, <laughs> shapes that you don't even know it. Yeah. Because they're terrible. Yeah, they are. And sometimes human beings are crab apples. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know people are going to say, well, he's talking about people. No. Well, what was it? The Bible says, the truth shall set you free. free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So if these crab apples listen to the truth, he'll say the word. Don't worry about what people said and what people do. Worry about what you're going to do about it. Yeah. That's what counts with yeah. God. It's what you're going to do. If you say, I don't want to, and you say, well, and I know it's hard to forget, too, when you forgive. But you can in fact. And it's not just an overnight thing. You might have to pray about it for six months to a year or longer. But it can be done if, if you want it to be done. People, we're all in this world together. And I know that we're all looking for Jesus to come, most of us. When John come out of the wilderness preaching baptism unto repentance, he didn't look to you. But the power of God draw people to him. And he baptized them. He baptized Jesus. Why? Because he was filled with the Holy Ghost before he left his mother's womb. That's what the Bible says. He was filled with the Holy Ghost and that Holy Ghost power of God drawed them to Him. And they listened to Him. And something in those words caught them and they brought it and they began to listen more. And even the Pharisee stuff began to listen. And they began to get baptized. Why? Because He was telling the truth and the truth set them free. Yeah. That's why. When they were down there in Egypt and they got in all that trouble, they began to pray to God. God said, the spring can take us out of here and deliver us. And God said he heard their prayers and he sent Moses down there to do that. And he did pray them out. But along the way, they kept going back or wanting to go back. There's Christians that way today. And I'm not saying that, that my life is just streamlined. No, I have a problem too that Sometimes you think, oh my goodness, they will put a thought in you. You'll be going down the road, they'll put a thought in your head. You know, what are you doing this for? I'm doing it because 
Christ says that's what we're supposed to do. Forgiveness is something that we all got to do. Forgiveness is something that God says for us to do. And I think I'll shut my mouth right about now. Yeah, we didn't get started from late, so we keep going. <laughs> we 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 are we are people that uh, are separated from the sins of the world through Christ. But yet the sins is there, and if we're not careful, we can commit them. Yeah. Yeah. Because let me tell you something. Satan is a wise old dude. He's a trickster. Yes. He is. You heard the Indians used to call the I believe it was the foxes. The tricksters and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something. He's got more ways to come at you. Yeah. As the old saying is, Carter's got liver pills. That's right. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's right. He's got them all and he knows them all. He knows the Bible. Yeah, he does. Yeah. As good as you or better. Yeah, better. <laughs> and he'll use it on you. Yes, he will. And I like to use the word when he attempted Eve. He said, well, you'll surely not die. God said they would die. Yeah. He said, well, you could have sure not die. They made him question see, God. See, and then he made it sound good. But you, you know it. Become wise as God. Knowing good from evil. Well, he didn't lie. They did know good from evil. But it was bad to know that at that time. They didn't even know they were naked until they ate of the fruit. They looked and said, that, and realized, hey, wait a minute. We're naked. It was so bad that they covered themselves with leaves. And you know the first sacrifice was ever made was then. God took an animal and made them skins. That was the first sacrifice. He sacrificed that animal for their clothes. <laughs> Can you imagine that? And then you put them out of the garden. Why? They sin. Yeah, no. Why do we don't go to heaven? We sin. Yeah. Why, is, why are people lost today? Sin. Yeah. Not forgiven. Because see, if you are forgiven with Christ, some way, somehow, you'll find it in your heart to forgive others. Because you have to. Because you can't live without forgiving people. Because you'd be mad at a lot of people by the time your life is over. And like I said before, when that happens and you, you, you're the one that gets hurt in the process of hating, hating to kill you. Hating and not forgiving is just like a cancer. It'll eat you up. Uh -huh. It'll start and it'll just keep eating until there's nothing left of you. There'll be a shell left and that's it because you have tough this sin in your life of not forgiving and hating you have tucked it in your life and it's ate you from the inside out yeah. because you let it go and you know the Bible says that what comes out of a man is defiling him well I'm tell you, a hatred comes out of a person mm -hmm. adultery comes out of a person condemning comes out yeah. don't go in it comes out forgiving comes out of a person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. So we we have to forgive no matter how much they do. I heard a preacher one time tell me, he said, well, yeah, but he said, you know, he said if a man slaps me and says he's repenting, I forgive him, and he keeps doing that every day, he said, I'm not sure he's sorry. Well, I'm not sure he is either. But you can't slap him back. God wants us to be, wants us to show a light like he is. He wants us to show forgiveness because Christ set that example for us. He wants us to feel this life because Christ set that example for us. Christ was in a fleshly body and he went through stuff that we couldn't imagine. But he forgave. He forget, and he went through it because of us. Yes, he did. 
He didn't have sin, but he took our sins on his back and took them to the cross and crucified them there. And then he said, Father, forgive them. Yeah, Why? Because he had all the sins of the world on him. Mm -hmm. And he forgave those people that stood there and mocked him and asked him, why don't you come down from our view of really God's child? If you're really the Christ, come on down. And then we'll believe you. Now, let me tell you something. Humans got big, big uh, egos. And it'd probably be one of us we'd jump down and show them, well, yeah, this is what we are. Yeah, yeah. But Christ knew if he came down, we'd still be lost. Yeah. The, whole, the whole process had to be done before we could be saved. He had to die, they had to take him, they had to bury him, he had to raise, he had to send back up into the heaven, he had to sit on the right hand of the Father making intercessions for us, or we could not be saved. That's right. You can believe what you want to, but the Bible says it, I believe it, and that settles it. And if I didn't believe it, that settled it. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. It doesn't matter where I believe it or not, it says it, and it's settled that way. Right. I believe it because I know it's the truth. Yes. I believe it because I love God. Yes. And you know something? I want any of you, anybody, tell me what God has done to you that makes you not love Him. No. Ask the guy that next time when you say, oh, God, and say, what has He ever done to you to make you not love Him? All he's done is send his son. He died on the cross. He shed his blood. And he forgave you of your sins. And he loves you like a son. So what has he done to make you so mad at him? Nothing. He's done nothing. And you don't have to do anything to get people mad at you either. You don't have to do anything to get people mad. Haven't you ever heard people walk up and say, you know, I just don't like that guy's looks over there. <laughs> now the guy might not be doing anything but just standing over there talking. They say, boy, I don't like his looks. Uh, so that's sort of judge. That's what he's talking about when he's talking about judge. No. You, yeah. know, you know, you've heard the old saying many, many times. You can't judge a book by its cover. But they do. I want to tell you a ridiculous thing that I read in the history of the Jewish laws of the church. And I thought it was the ridiculous thing I ever heard. But there's some churches that got ridiculous laws. Yeah. 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 And I wanted to tell this one because I had to laugh when I heard it. You know in the Jewish thing that on Sunday you couldn't tie a knot on a bucket and let it down and draw water. That was a sin because you broke the Sabbath day and you couldn't do it. But now let me tell you this. A woman could take her girdle off, tie it to a bucket, and draw water, and that was okay. What's the difference? <laughs> Did you see any difference in that? She's still drawing water. But that's one of the Jewish laws in their church at that time where you couldn't draw water, but she could, and she did that. <laughs> now, does that make sense to anybody? That was a ridiculous one. Ain't you seen a few of them in the churches in this day and time that's ridiculous? Yes. I have. Yes. And I thought that was, I, I wasn't going to tell that, and I thought, well, you know, it is ridiculous, so I'm not going to tell that one too. And it's true. They, that's what they said they had back in the churches and the Jewish churches and stuff. And there were a lot of Bibles that you couldn't draw water, you couldn't go outside. Tie a bucket to a rope, drop it down and draw water. But a woman could and she took her girl and tied it on her and draw water. Done, wouldn't it? Yeah. That's like me telling you when you leave the church to say, put, keep God in there, walk out backwards. <laughs> Never turn your back on saying, just walk backwards all the time. <laughs> and you won't have to face him. <laughs> That's about the same, that's about as stupid as that, ain't it? Yep. We got some ridiculous believers and laws in this country, or laws in the churches, 
The top post is ridiculous. That's what they got up at the White House. Amen. <laughs> and they're getting ridiculous more and more every day. Uh -huh. But honey, I want to tell you something. You got to know what you're doing, and the only way you know what you're doing is to read your Bible. Amen. Other than that, you don't know. You're lost. You're lost. lost. But you know. The world was saved by Christ when he died. Mm -hmm. They just ain't accept that yet. Yeah, that's, true. that's the reason they're still lost. Yeah. It ain't because of Christ and it ain't because God wants them lost. It's because they won't accept that Jesus died for them. Right. And that's a very simple thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not that hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on to me, all you that labor and heavy laden. Yes, yes, yes. I will give you rest. And yes. I'll give you rest. Yes. Take my yoke upon you, and run to me, for I am weak, and all in heart. And learn to me. That's what you got to do. Learn of him. Yeah. He says, he tells us this in his word, and I believe his word. Yes. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not one of these fellows that uh, jumps into it and, 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 and proclaims everything that I'm doing everything because I'm probably not. Yeah. Nine times out of ten, you, sometimes you don't know what, what's what till you start. Have you ever been a, a young Christian the same way? They begin in the Bible, they start yeah. reading, and they say, they're good stuff, and we're saying, that's wrong, you know. That's your, well, when they get to it, they, they read it, and they see that what they're doing is wrong, they quit. See, sometimes, if you're not knowledgeable in the Bible, you do stuff that you don't know from. Like drawing water. You don't know you're wrong if you use a rope. Supposed to use a girl. <laughs> the disciples were wrong because they put some corn in their hand and rubbed it off and was eating it on the Sabbath day. And that was wrong. The drawing water was on the Sabbath day. You couldn't because it was wrong. You couldn't, if your oxen got out, you're supposed to let it run loose, I suppose. Yeah. Because you ain't supposed to put it out. Jesus explained to them one time, said, well, if you have a sheep that falls into a ditch, well, you go pull it out. Well, what he was saying was, I've got sheep out there that's in the ditch, and they need to pull it out, and that's Amen. what I'm going to do. I'm going to pull them out. Yes. I'm going to bring them home. Remember the parable about the man that had a hundred and lost one and went and got it, when he come back, he told the big party, one more thing, and then I'll hush. You remember the prodigal son when he left home and his father gave him everything, all these goods or half of it, what he owned, and he left and he got down there and he spent all his money and he didn't have no money and he was broke and he took a job feeding the hogs with the Jewish people that was beneath them and he was feeding them. Then he realized, he said, I'll just go home. I'll just get up and I'll go home. But the point of this story I want to make is this. He didn't, when he got home, his father didn't say, hey, listen, you waste all your money. You spend it all. You have nothing here. You can leave any time. I don't want you here. No. He went out and fell on his neck and kissed him and told him, said, bring the shoes, bring the best robe, kill the fatty cat. Let's have a party because my son that was lost. God, I believe, is the same way with with them that are saved, I believe he says, come on, let's bring them home. Remember what the Bible said, there's more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner that's saved in 99 that stayed, Amen. that's in the church. Why well, is yeah. lost and you know where it's going. There's a lake of part it's going to unless it comes home. See, we all left home. We're no different than anyone else. We all left home. We all was lost. We all left home and, and spent our money, if you want to, spend our time doing things that we shouldn't have been doing. We left God. And we that came back, I believe they was rejoicing in heaven every time one saved. To tell you the truth about it, I don't think we rejoice enough when one's saved, but the heaven makes up for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it says there's more rejoicing. I'm going to push, okay? Uh, Roxanne, do you want to say anything? Thank you want to close it? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. Wonderful.
whiter than snow, and more than whiter than Praise snow. Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. God too, you know, if you've not been walking right or if you've done something wrong, you feel like it's not, uh, that you just need to ask God to forgive you. It's okay just to ask the Lord to forgive you back in your heart again, you know, to ask Him to come in. And I always want to give, you know, let people know, even on Facebook, YouTube, here in our church, you don't know the Lord, today is the day of salvation, Scripture says. Today is the day. Don't not know God. Because He loves you. He loves you and He you know, He doesn't expect us to walk a perfect life. Just give Him a chance to come in your heart and work with you. Give Him a chance to mold you and shape you the way He wants to. Not not what other Christians think you should be, because other Christians can be the worst to other Christians by saying, "Oh, you got, you can't do that. You got to do this. You got to walk this way. You got to dress this way. You got, you know." And uh, we can be the worst to one another. God simply just wants you to ask Him in His heart and ask for forgiveness. He'll come in. The Holy Spirit will come in and start walking with you and showing you things that he wants out of your life. Mm -hmm. so if you don't know the Lord, today's the day to ask him in your heart. Um, anybody have a hymn that they'd like to sing? Um, let's do 369. Stand up to Jesus. <laughs> oh, there I was you go. really close to that. that. What? What did you say, Rockman? I was real close to that. And I don't know how it goes now. I know. <laughs> Stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up,
We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you've been here with us today. And Lord, we just uh, ask that you have your way within the hearts of the people today. That you would shine your face upon them. That you would go into their homes, their families, their jobs, and whatever their life may bring them, Lord. And may your light shine out through them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you. Come back, guys.